You know the famous joke, a journalist goes around and asks a Russian, a Pole, and an Israeli the same question. He first goes to the Russian, excuse me, what's your opinion of the meat shortage? The Russian says, what's an opinion? The reporter then goes to the Pole, excuse me, what's your opinion of the meat shortage? The Pole goes, what's meat? He then goes to the Israeli, excuse me, what's your opinion of the meat shortage? The Israeli replies, what? Excuse me. Norman Finkelstein speaks for no one. You know what I'm making the film about? No. About anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism, what does that mean? It means when people hate uh, the Jewish people. No way, man. Jewish people control the war. Yeah? Of course. Professor Norman Finkelstein, a Jewish academic from DePaul University in Chicago, has written a book called The Holocaust Industry, in which he accuses parts of the Jewish establishment of making cynical political use of the Holocaust. Dr. Finkelstein, you have some visitors? Whenever Israel faces a public relations debacle or comes under pressure to resolve the Israel-Palestine conflict, they start up this uh, extravaganza called the new anti-Semitism. As it's usually understood, anti-Semitism means an irrational hatred of Jews born simply of the fact that they are Jewish. But that's not what's going on. Here it's a hostility born of the fact that the state which claims to represent them is engaged in quite brutal violence. I'm sure lots of people I meet have this, what you say, deep, you know, deep down inside, they have this kind of queasy feeling about Jews. I'm sure that's true. But did it have any real sub substantial repercussions on me in life? The answer is just no. There's a kind of pathological narcissism, naval contemplation. When you are the richest, wealthiest, most successful ethnic group in the United States, you've got the world on a platter, and you sit around and you're talking about anti-Semitism. It's just kind of shameful, I think. At the time I first interviewed Finkelstein, I didn't realize what a controversial figure he was in the eyes of the Jewish establishment. Finkelstein, the son of Holocaust survivors, has been labeled a self-hating Jew, a Holocaust denier, and a madman. I had interviews stopped at the very mention of his name. I know if you Google Norman Finkelstein and Holocaust denier, nowadays you'll get about 10,000 websites. Well. If I'm a Holocaust denier, if I'm a Holocaust denier, I would have to be certifiably insane. I would have to be clinically insane because given who my parents were, for me to be denying the Nazi Holocaust, I'd have to be clinically insane. So you have to judge for yourself. You may disagree with me, but is it your impression that I'm clinically insane? Now, if you think I'm not, then you have to wonder, why are those 10,000 websites saying that? I want to ask you a question. Look over here. Do you see a Holocaust coming? It's crazy. There's so much hunger, so much starvation in the world. So many people are suffering. And you want me to get excited about some idiot painting a swastika somewhere? Finkelstein lost his job at the university because of what he claims was pressure from the Israeli lobby. Then he was denied entry to Israel because he was, as the authorities described, a security hazard, which being Jewish himself is probably unprecedented. Finkelstein reminds me of the biblical prophets of doom, who were always being pelted with stones for saying things nobody wanted to hear. One of the major kind of... Uh, um 
claims I, I, I hear from people like the ADL or you know other Jewish people is that like how come always picking people picking up on Israel how come there are so much you know injustice mm-hmm. you know in other parts of the world and nobody speaks about you know mm-hmm. what, what is the reason I for think that people, listen I opened the radio I hear non-stop about Sudan I hear non-stop about Tibet I hear non-stop about Darfur I hear a lot of The only place I hear excuses made for is Israel. That's the place where I hear excuses. And we do have to remember, it is the oldest occupation in the world. I mean, 40 years really is enough. It's older than you. It's older than you, the occupation. Doesn't that kind of stun you? The irony is... That the Nazi Holocaust has now become the main ideological weapon for launching wars of aggression. Every time you want to launch a war of aggression, drag in the Nazi Holocaust. It's the suffering then used as another pretext or excuse to humiliate, degrade and torture the Palestinians. That's the problem. The suffering comes as a package. It then comes, here is the suffering, now we blow up your house. Here is the suffering, now we take your land. Here is the suffering, now we drop artillery shells or shoot artillery shells at your villages. It's a package deal with Israel and its American supporters. It's not just suffering, it's suffering which is then wrapped in a club. And the club is then used to break the skulls of the Palestinians. That's the problem. It's not being used to educate people. It's not being used to enlighten people. It's not being used to make people more moral. It can be. But it's not. I mean... It's not. That's the whole point. Of course it can be. But it isn't. It's the best thing that will ever happen to Israel if they get rid of these American Jews. Who are warmongers from Martha's Vineyard. And they're warmongers from the Hamptons. And they're warmongers from Beverly Hills. And they're warmongers from Miami. It's been a disaster for Israel. You know, it's the best thing if they can ever get rid of this American jury. It's a curse. For Finkelstein, Foxman is the main enemy. <laughs> you see, that's why you're not going to get like, people's attention, you know, for things like that. Some people laugh. You're comparing Foxman to Hitler, that's kind of... Uh... Uh, it's, to, it's an insult to Hitler. Hitler at least didn't do it for money. You... Finkelstein took his own trauma as the son of Holocaust survivors to the opposite extreme. When I asked him if he had any sympathy for the Israeli victims as well as for the Palestinians, He compared Israeli casualties to the German casualties in World War II. You know, you're funny, I have to tell you, you're funny. Why you come that? from a society in which everyone calls everyone a Nazi, right? They call Rabin a Nazi, Ben-Gurion called Jabotinsky a Nazi, Jabotinsky called Ben-Gurion a Nazi, uh, Begin called... Uh, Ben-Gurion and Nazi, they all said, each of them said, one is worse than Hitler. That's the whole language of how your society. It's also the language I grew up with. You know, everything in my house, the food, worse than Auschwitz. The clothes, worse than that. That's the house you grew up in. And all of a sudden, you get so pious when I go like that. Your whole society is like that. Why was Rabin? You don't remember when they made Rabin with the SS before he was shot? And then you all of a sudden get so pious. I just think about like how people... Be- because of what? Because of Abe Foxman? We have to be pious with Abe Foxman? A hoodlum and a thug? I'm just trying to see, to think how other people will perceive it, you know, for myself, you know, you can go and do it all day long, you know. I did it with you, you're in this valley. You yeah, but it's on film, you know, it's on film, you know, other people will see it afterwards. Then take it out! That's why you're an editor. No, that obviously, you know, should stay in the film, you know, that's... I am fine! You think I care? You think I care?
So you like the neighborhood? Very much. Look at the breeze. Go ahead. Hi. Um, yeah. During your speech, you made a lot of references to Jewish people as well as certain people in your audience, not Jewish people in general, but Sorry. certain people, especially in your audience, to Nazis. Now, that is extremely offensive when certain people are German. And they're also extremely offensive to people who have actually suffered under Nazi rule. I don't respect that anymore. I really don't. I don't like and I don't respect the crocodile tears to, con to the crocodile tears. No. Uh, I'm so, folks, uh, allow me to finish. And allow me to, allow me to finish. Listen, sir. Allow me to finish. Allow me to finish. Uh, sir, sir. I don't like to play. I don't like to play before an audience the Holocaust card. But since now I feel now I feel compelled to. My late father was in Auschwitz. My late mother, please shut up. My late father was in Auschwitz. My late mother was in Maidana concentration camp. Every single member of my family on my father's side, on my father's side, the Jews did not take arms against the my Jews. My late father was in Auschwitz concentration camp. My late mother was in Maidana concentration camp. Every single member of my family on both sides was exterminated. Both of my parents were in the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. And it's in precisely and exactly because of the lessons my parents taught me and my two siblings that I will not be silent when Israel commits its crimes against the Palestinians. And I consider nothing more despicable than to use their suffering and their martyrdom to try to justify the torture, the brutalization, the dem demolition of homes that Israel daily commits against the Palestinians. So I refuse any longer to be intimidated or browbeaten by the tears. If you had any heart in you, you would be crying for the Palestinians, not for what she's done.